Hello. So I thought I'd give you a quick uh, run through on how I built this fearsome Chinese dragon or whatever it is type of mask that goes over the head of your toddler or indeed yourself if you wanted to join in as well. So I thought one of the things that was really nice about this is uh, I hope it isn't one of these guides where you think that looks great on Instagram but actually when you try to do it you realize They've missed out a ton of steps and it's probably made by someone who's ridiculously uh, overqualified and you've got no idea where to begin. So I wanted to be somewhat of an antidote to that sort of shiny veneer and actually show really how to do it in basic steps. Um, so if you'll forgive a bit of granularity, what I hope is that this is actually a genuine guide that you could go away and do it if you're looking for something to do at the weekend uh, for your kids to have a bit of fun uh, making stuff. So the key, most useful thing I think here is a stapler and a lot of projects are basically let down by the fact that if you're using a lot of glue you often have to wait for it to dry or it's quite difficult to get it in exactly the right place um, either because it doesn't dry quickly or if it is stuff like hot glue gun it can be a bit scary to use because you're having to put your fingers into places blind. So I actually think the ability to have two bits of cardboard and staple them together I think is a really nice trick for sort of speed modeling and also it's a little bit like the dressmaking process that you, if you use a mannequin you tend to want to just pin things quickly and actually a staple is excellent for that before you glue it. So without further ado uh, this is how you do it and some of the things you'll need scissors I've got a little glue gun for just a few things a scalpel knife you can live without it scissors are fine but it just makes life a little bit easier um, pens, etc., and stapler. And this was just Amazon boxes and uh, cereal packets. So, <clears throat> the thing that I thought, again, I mentioned dressmaking. Uh, strangely, I did textiles when I was at school. And uh, it is one of those things you realise that trying to get my toddler to sit still whilst I make a headband uh, isn't that easy, even though, because he's just thinking, I want the dinosaur now. And so what I did was take the measurement of his head and then found one of his balls uh, that was roughly the same size. And as you can see here, that allowed me to almost have a mannequin when he was busy getting distracted or wanting to go run around a little bit. And then he'd come back to the bit when the build was more progressed and looking a bit more interesting. But either way, I thought this was a really nice trick that you can basically just take it off, staple it, and you're done. And so these two little bendy bits of cardboard, and then put one over the top, um, obviously so it doesn't just fall down with the weight. And then this was a little bit of a, a slightly tricky, should we say conceptual bit, um, which was almost to sort of appreciate that you're creating the, the width of this is basically pretty much guided by the width of your, your child's head. And so I think that's quite an interesting one to, to use. And so one of the things I do a lot when I'm prototyping is I start with, if you like, the critical thing, which in this case is the child's head, and then build everything off that rather than trying to say, make a really cool jaw and then figure out how to sort of squash it over my son's face. And I think that's quite an important fundamental thing when trying to do quick prototyping. So anyway, the other thing that was a nice little bit of learning, and I didn't do this actually on this first prototype one, um, but I did do it on the second one because I realized it made sense, is that you'll notice these teeth line up really nicely. And it actually, because if you look at this piece here, you'll notice that basically they're the same piece of card that has been split in a zigzag. And not only does that save you cutting two things twice, it also just means it gives it a nice design continuity between the two if you're wanting to be geeky about it. So um, with that in mind, all those things came together and I drew in red just to show if you like the, the basic proportions of the width of the balloon or head and then being ready to glue those two little twin tabs, which were the excess card that went around the head. So with that in mind, again, showing the stapler and a bit of a subtlety, if you possibly can, it's not always easy, but if you can, make it so that the little hooks that bend round, you want those facing away from skin or anything like that. But sometimes you can't always do that. And if that's the case, just put a bit of sellotape over it or masking tape to protect it so it doesn't catch on. It's not that it's really gonna gouge a huge amount of uh, skin or draw blood in reality. Staples are pretty well designed um, 
but the thing is more just that it catches hair, or at least certainly hair like mine. So again, as you can see, that's the basic shape of uh, where I've taken the cutout from above and bent it around, and then basically did the same with the lower jaw, but this time also just created a little <coughs> flap going around it, and that just gives it a little bit of extra strength. And so again, just stapling those together, and then putting the jaws in place. And again, I think this is like a really good one where I was putting it on my son's head and then working out how open I needed them to be um, so that he could see clearly out of it. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't sort of claustrophobic and too narrow. So again, I think that's a nice thing that you're doing on the fly and able to correct it as you go with your kid. And certainly by this point of the build, he was definitely engaged because it looked a bit dinosaur-y. So, Covering the head, again, another bit of cardboard, and again, taking these red lines, which were the reference of the, the width of the head, plus, plus a little bit extra just for, for slack. Um, I basically, you know, built that over the top and made really, I really didn't try to go for sort of high realism. As you can see, that's the jaw. I just covered that bit and then bent it up a little bit, bent it across and bent it down and bent it down there as well. And then let's forget the tail for now, but I basically just stuck the tail on afterwards, which we'll get to. So, all I was really doing was working out roughly where those points were and just using a, using a pen to score the cardboard. And one of the things I make a little bit of a point in showing is just paying attention to where you uh, align the, the cardboard for strength. So it doesn't really matter if you get it wrong, but if you put it in that direction, it'll just be that little bit stronger. And so you can see that's where the, the cardboard fluting, so little holes are running. And it actually just means that it's sort of a little bit stronger in that particular dimension. So I then chopped it, folded the tabs in, stapled them round, as you can see. And then I've shown this for sort of good measure, put some glue, and again, this is sort of good technique, putting the glue on the staples and then putting on the outside piece over the top of it meant that essentially it was sort of double double structurally bound because the staples were now glued in place as well so they weren't going to wiggle loose so that's that I thought that was a nice way and of course if you look at the guide links below you can see the detail of this a little bit more but again, the tail was really, you know, just a suggestion of a tail. And I think this is, again, is something that I think good toys tend to sort of recognize. And although this is just a sort of thing that I threw together in maybe half an hour or something, apart from painting it, um, I kind of feel like a lot of the times you don't have to do something that is very, very accurate. Um, sometimes just having a suggestion of a tail is all you need because trying to make something that goes all the way down the back I, I knew even before I was going to do it that he would spin around, it would whip out, donk into something or another child and just break instantly. So actually having a, a slightly smaller, closer to the body tail, I thought was quite sensible and certainly no complaints for the kids who were playing with it. So again, spikes, lots of different ways to put it on, but I think the key point that I made here was just appreciating that this tail flexes. So I glued half of the spike on and half of it I left it so that it could flex and move around a little bit. And again, so the wobbly eyes. Again, this is really just a sort of embellishment if you're interested, but I just took thin strips of these toilet tubes, rolled them into a little spiral, and so it just means that they have a little bit of a little bit of boinginess like that. But again, just a bit of fun. So the nose holes again uh, weren't, weren't particularly, you know, complex, but I thought they were also just a nice way to, you know, we could possibly put fire in them or something, but I didn't really know where it was going to go, but I thought it was a bit of fun. So that's it, model made. He was enjoying it, and I think one of the things I often sort of say in um, tutorials if you're, if you're designing stuff with your kids is, is at this sort of stage, this is the really important stage to test it with them and see whether they're happy about it. Because if you realize something's a tight fit or doesn't make sense to them, this is the time you want to correct it rather than when you've lovingly painted it with them. So then, painting it. And I think this is just one of those great things where they, often at nursery or school, you're often painting things which are 
you know, usually two-dimensional and occasionally three-dimensional. But I think there's actually a whole different level of challenge in painting something that's quite an odd shape like this. So I, I hope it's one of those things that sort of makes sense. And as you can see, two different variations, because obviously you've got to have a dinosaur fight at some point, or battle, or marriage, or whatever. Leave it up to them. So that's it. And it was great fun. And uh, I'd really love it if you posted any of the comments and let me know how you got on. And uh, please check out the links in the bottom for other things like this that I make. And uh, thanks again. Bye.